Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. A reading from the 10th chapter of Acts. Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and helping all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did in both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Here ends the reading. Dear friends in Christ, hallelujah, Christ is risen. This is more than a nice catchphrase because the entirety of Christianity, indeed the hope of the entire world, rests on these words, Christ is risen. If Jesus is not risen from the grave, then sin and death is more powerful than He. If Jesus is not risen from the dead, then He is not the Christ of God. If Jesus did not come out of the grave, then He is no different than any other man who has died and been buried and awaits the judgment. If Christ is not risen from the dead, then you and I have absolutely no hope because we will still have our sin and when we stand before God on that last day, it will not be pretty. Scripture tells us that it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. But fear not. Fear not. I am here to proclaim on the authority of Holy Scripture. Scripture that has been preserved from the time of the apostles that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He was crucified, died, and was buried, and rose on the third day. So I'm excited. I'm excited especially on this Easter morning to be here because along with Peter, I am commanded by the Lord, the Christ of God, to preach to you and to testify that Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of lords. He is the Son of God. He is the first and the last. He is the Alpha and the Omega. And He is the one appointed by God to be the judge of the living and the dead. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. But before he rose from the dead, before he rose from the dead, he had to die. And why? Why did he have to die? Jesus had to die because perfect justice cannot excuse sin. Perfect justice demands punishment when the law is broken. In the courts of God, We are not compared to one another. We are compared to God's holy law. And Scripture says, in fact, St. Paul writes this in his letter to the Galatians. And he's citing Moses even more importantly. All who rely on works of the law are under a curse. That is, if you're relying on the fact that you can do good, and you're relying on works of the law. All who rely on works of the law are under a curse, for it is written, 
Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. By inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle John writes, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Think about that. We say those words, maybe we say them too often, but I want you to think about that. If we say, if any of us say, we have no sin, we're just deceiving ourselves. And St. John says, the truth is not in us. We all have sin. And the wages of sin is death. Scripture also declares there is no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. That's why Jesus had to give His life. And that is why He had to shed His blood. Because that is the only payment acceptable to a holy and just God. But this is Easter. And we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus because death is not the final chapter. The grave could not hold Jesus because He had not, in fact, sinned. He offered His life to God in place of ours. Jesus took the punishment of God. But in the end, when He had sacrificed His life for ours, then God accepted His blood offering as atonement for our sins and declared Him innocent and raised Jesus from the grave on that glorious first day of the week. On that Sunday morning when the women went to the tomb of Jesus, they found that the stone had been rolled away. And you've probably heard this before, but let me say it again. That stone was not rolled away to let Jesus out. It was rolled away so that we could go in and see that He was no longer there. That empty tomb. That space. That speaks volume. It's a lasting witness declaring that the promise of God's salvation had been fulfilled. That empty tomb testifies that sin no longer separates men from God. That tomb testifies that death has now lost its sting. The empty tomb testifies that a new day has dawned. The old has passed away. All things have become new. That empty tomb testifies what the Scriptures preach. Death is done. Death is over. And death is no more because Jesus has overcome sin, death, and the grave. God preaches through the prophet Isaiah, He will swallow up death forever, and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces, and the reproach of His people He will take away from all the earth. Again, God says, He poured out His soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet He bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgressors. And the Bible records Jesus' words in John's Gospel, truly, Truly, I say to you, whoever hears my words and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. And again in Mark's Gospel, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. The empty tomb preaches all of this. The question is, do you believe this? Now belief. Now belief is not some mere kind of head knowledge. The mental assent to the fact that Jesus lived. As one believes that Abraham Lincoln once lived. Know the belief I'm talking about this this is not natural. For this belief is born 
of faith that comes from God Himself. The Apostle Paul says, by grace you have been saved by faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. This faith that trusts in the completed work of Jesus Christ for salvation is not natural to mankind. The natural person does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are folly to him or her. And he or she is not able to understand them because they are spiritually discerned. But you, you who are hearing my very words today, are being touched by the Holy Spirit. For I have been appointed and commanded by my Lord to preach. You have been encountered by the truth that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and the third day He rose again from the dead. That is who you're being encountered by today. All of this Jesus did to save you and me from the bonds of sin. We cannot do these things for ourselves. We are powerless. On the day you die, you're not going to find St. Peter standing at the pearly gates asking trivial questions and telling jokes. There's only one door into heaven. And His name is Jesus. And He is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Because Jesus humbled Himself and became obedient to death, God has appointed Him to be the judge of the living and the dead. The good news for those who believe and are baptized, we don't have to fear that, and we will be saved. In His death, Jesus took the wrath of God so that we don't have to. In His resurrection, He gives life to those who believe on His name. Because Jesus is alive, we have hope. Hope that lets us face death and the grave with no more fear than going to bed for a good night's sleep. Because Jesus lives, All the children of God can say with St. Paul, O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? And in the midst of the worst pain, I mean the absolute worst pain this world has to offer, we Christians have hope. And we can look misery in the face and we can repeat these words written by Job. I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last He will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Now to Him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of His glory with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory and majesty and dominion and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen.